Hey folks, we're the Hamilton Game, welcome back to another 90s era of Super Hope you enjoyed my review slash epic rant on Spawn in 1997. Once again, my name is Levi McNally, and this is my YouTube channel. Welcome, if you're new here, I've uh, been doing a superhero marathon on my YouTube channel. I'm now in the 90s era of superhero reviews, uh, superhero films that came out in the 1990s, 1990 to 1999, and now uh, I'm on the last movie of 1997. I did review Spawn to prepare for this movie. I did review Batman and Robin. I think back in 2021, something like that. But I already reviewed that, so that won't be reviewed. Yeah. So the last one is, of course, another shitty superhero film. And this time it stars Shaquille O'Neal as a DC character. Still, oh my gosh, this film was awful. Not only was boring, but this film was terrible. Yeah, I didn't care for Stone. I'm sorry. This is my second time watching it. I watched it, I think, one time, like, on TV. I watched it again prepared for this review. And I think, I think this film sucks. I'm sorry. Anyway. Thing is, though, Steel is a comic book character where he's a DC, this is a DC character. And I guess you can say at the time the reason that Shaq got this role, because at the time, if you remember, the year before Space Jam came out with Michael Jordan, and that was a big hit, so I'm guessing they were thinking, well, let's make these NBA players just, Shaq is a basketball player, NBA player, so they're probably thinking, well, let's make them into movie stars. So I guess they picked Shaquille O'Neal, because I think he did a movie called Kazim. But the difference is I like Space Jam a lot better than this, because when Space Jam is fun, and Michael Jordan is playing himself, he's not playing a character, he's just playing himself, just being himself. And it works. And I wouldn't say his acting is fantastic in that movie, but he looks like he's having fun. Shaquille O'Neal looks, just looks bored out of his mind, and he's just doing a terrible job. He's trying to act, and he does a terrible job at it. You know, just, just showing his teeth, you know, chalking, you know, terrible, di his line delivery of dialogue is just terrible. I'll admit, there was a little bit of stuff I did like, kind of like, in this movie, but it's not enough to make it good. And still as a character, this is John Henry Irons. Basically in the comics, he's a ge he is a genius engineer who built a mechanical suit of armor that mirrors Superman's powers. Tensely sought to replace him after he was killed by Doomsday. After Superman was resurrected, he accepted still as an ally. His real name is John Henry Irons and he was a sledgehammer. His inspiration is Superman. But the only thing in Superman you get in this movie he has a tattoo of Man of Steel with the S on it for Superman. This is a reference to the mythic railroad worker John Henry. He is a niece named Natasha Iron, who is also a superhero. Yeah, they do have the character in Superman Lois, the Reign of Superman, which is a lot better. Reign of the Superman and Superman anime series, he fights Metallo. That was awesome. Yeah, but John Henry's his character was inspired by Superman. See, he's a brilliant weapons engineer, and he's capable of doing it, just, just, you know, in technology. He's a very smart guy, but in this movie, he's not, he has to have people do it for him. I don't care for the comics, so I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but still, does seem like a cool character, but not with this movie. He's an engineer and natural athlete who displays an impressive of strength. In addition, he wears a suit of power armor, which grants him flight and chance, strength, and endurance. Steel modified his suit many times through his career. The intentional man of steel design was armed with, yeah, his suit can fly, but not in here. We just have Shaq walking over with the suit. Oh, I'll get to that later in this film. He has enemies, but none from the comics, from in this movie. Yeah, and he's in Superman animation. See, that looks better, and that's from, that was from, that series came out in that, late now, probably 1998, I'm thinking, that episode maybe. And that looks better. He appears in an episode of Justice League Unlimited. There's an internal version of him and Superman Lewis, but that suit is a lot more cooler. And the guy's a lot more smarter. This film was originally meant to be a spin-off of, of a new Superman film based on the Superman, but however the project ultimately became divorced from the Superman and, and the development help, causing it to be moved forward without the film it was meant to be attached to. So yeah. 
bring me into the production of this movie is that the production of the film still started with a music producer Quincy Jones and his partner David Sullivan. Both Jones and Sullivan were fans of the still character, especially Jones, who found personal reasons to support the project. Jones stated that he found that he found a children's perspective of the future has changed for the worse. And I hate seeing young people who don't believe in the future. He still, still, and I don't want to use the word that word superhero because he doesn't fly or anything like that. But it's just a whole role model. Let's just call him a snipe, a superhuman being. Wesley Snipes was Kenneth Johnson's first choice for the lead role. And funny, the next year after, in 1998, um, he would play a, Mar a Marvel character. I'm talking Wesley Snipes. Blade. And Blade is a ton better than this. And this is also another superhero movie that you know stars a black actor, by the way. An African American. She came on him. See what I'm reading here. They got everything wrong. The character does fly, or can fly, but they didn't want to do that here. Jones and Summer had intentionally approached Shaquille O'Neal and his agent regarding a hardware adaptation, but the basketball player said he he related himself more to Silk. Johnson later admitted that Shaq was a bad choice for the role. <laughs> You think Johnson? You think Johnson? Yeah. Yeah, what were you smoking? What were you thinking of hiring him? Kenneth Johnson was a screenwriter and director still. Johnson was originally uninterested in doing a superhero film, and you can tell when he made this movie, by the way. Having first turned down some of the projects as we discussed in the television series, The Dynamic Woman, Alienation, Alienation and the Incredible Hole. From the Christian Joe Simon described Steele as being different. Today. He was a night shining armor. And said, Johnson removed Steele's cap from his costume to reflect this. Johnson described Steele's persona as a blue collar Batman and removed Steele from his comic book storyline and replaced it with protagonist and of his own invention. To label the urban aspects of the dialogue, Johnson took a copy of the script of South Central Los Angeles and spent a day with a group of kids to ensure that the language of some of the characters was more believable. Throughout the film and script, Johnson created several allusions to his previous television series, Alienation. Filming the film's schedule consisted of 51 days with 32 full nights of shooting in downtown Los Angeles. The shooting schedule presented difficulties for the director due to the schedule with the star Shaquille O'Neal. O'Neal was also committed to playing the 19, in the 1996 Summer Olympics and training at the Los Angeles Lakers camp in Hawaii. This left Johnson with five weeks to complete filming the Los Angeles with O'Neal. So Shaq had one read through with the script before the Olympics and worked with acting coach Ben Martin in between games to work on his character. When O'Neal returned, to act to the rest of the cast, he had all of his lines memorized. Which is good, but his line literally again sucked. For the cast of the movie, you have Shaquille O'Neal as John Henry Irons. Again, he is a basketball player, but Shaq has played in other certain movies as well. Uh, he was in Grown Ups. Yeah, he's, he was in Good Burger as himself. He played in, I think, a movie called Zine, Freddy Got Fair, which I heard that movie is terrible. He was in Jack and Jill in a weird commercial. He was in Skating Movie 4. Bad movie, but, you know, he's working with Dr. Phil in that scene. That was funny. Grown Ups 2, Blended. Yeah. And Huggy Halloween. So he's working with Adam Sandler a little bit. Amnish Gish as Susan Sparks, or Sparky. Good actress, but completely wasted here. I thought she was actually... I thought she did a decent job, actually. But, you know, she could even... You know, keep up with with Shaq's dead acting, dead weight acting. You know, yeah, she's been in a few movies. Judd Nelson as Nathan O'Burk. Judd Nelson is the villain of the movie. Y'all should remember him from uh, The Breakfast Club and Saint Elmo's Fire. But Breakfast Club mainly. Working with John Hughes, good actor. He tries here. Richard Roundtree as Uncle Joe. Uh, he was, or he best played the last year, but he was Shaft. Oh, they make a Shaft joke by the way in this movie. I think, let's see. see oh, he was in George of the Jungle. Yeah, I remember him in that. Yeah. The Disney movie with Brandon Fraser. Better movie than this, by the way. At least in my opinion. I'm P. Hall as Grandma, as the grandmother. Ray J. as Martin. Hill Hopper as Slots. Kevin Jurinx as Singer. He was a henchman in the mask. Wait a minute. 
Yeah, she's seen Scarab before. Let's see. A singer. I think I remember him in the match. Yeah, he was a one of Dorian's henchmen. Yeah. That match over, he was a two faces. He was two faces though. He was seen. Yeah, seen in this movie. Yeah, but I remember him in the mask. He was one of the wins. Uh, I never recognized that guy. Yeah. Yeah, mask was the mask was definitely a better movie than this, by the way. Charles Napier is in this movie. The late Charles Napier. The only movie I think of the first Bell Part 2. Yeah, and the Blues Brothers. You see this in the movie The Blues Brothers. But, you know, Murdoch, I'm coming for you. I'm just quoting the first Bell Part 2. Harry Keane. He's in it. Thomas Perry. Ruben Aldell is in it. She was in Rocky too. The film was written by Kenneth Johnson, also written by him. I don't see any other movies he directed, but he directed some TV shows. I think Cole Hulk's trying to go with me. I guess he just, he was, he was, he, you know, did he direct D3? No. No, but he did the story for it, and I hated, I didn't like D3. <laughs> I thought that might have the third movie, I thought that still. And here he is doing another crappy movie a year after, but still. You know, he needs to say to do a TV show because, dude, you can't write a movie. <laughs> it's based on still created by Lou Simpson and Joe Badella, I guess who created the character. It's produced by David Zosman and Quincy Jones. I think I've heard that name, Quincy Jones. I think he was one of the creators of the first Prince of Bel Air, I think. With Will Smith. Maybe. But in the film, the cinematographer by Mark Arwen. I will say this the cinematographer does look nice in the movie. He did it, you know, he, he, he also did it for I Come in Peace with Dolph Lundgren, Robocop 2, Passenger 57. Wesley Snipes, Dumb and Dumber, here are the, you know, better movies than this. It's edited by John F. Link, but he's known, he, he was most well, he's most well known for editing work on Die Hard. Let's see, all of them Die Hard movies? No, just the first one. He, and he did it for uh, Commando, for action movies like Commando, Predator. Uh, Die Hard, Roadhouse, Hard to Kill with Steven Seagal. He did that movie, The Mighty Ducks, Mighty Ducks 2, The Quest with Van Damme. Yeah. But he's a, he's a, he's a good editor, Mark Irwin. Yeah. I mean, John F. Link. Yeah. <laughs> it's distributed by Warner Brothers. It was released August 15, 1997. The budget to make the movie was $16 million, and it, the box office made $1.7 million. So, $1.7 million. So, it's still tanked at the box office. Yeah, the complaint of critics complained about the film's poor cheesiness and the poor acting, which I don't blame the critics. So Shaquille O'Neal, you know, added to the soundtrack of the film. The movie does have some decent music, I'll admit. Doesn't say the movie. Shaquille O'Neal earned a nasty award for his performance of the film, but he lost against Kevin. Personally, I'm not that huge fan. I mean, go oh, wait a minute. Kevin Costner's a good actor. He didn't, yeah, Shaquille O'Neal should have got the ranty for this movie. He deserved it. Yeah. When I just said this, this film is slow to gather momentum and journey slowly to sign my attention. I agree. The film is too broad an effort to attract anything other than the mostly under demanding crowd. If, still is a bad acting movie that includes not only super cliches, but it's at the TV movie of the weak ones. But, Yeah. Oh, it is she the world record for having the biggest sophomore weekend for drop any superhero film, being tell of the Marvels. I haven't seen the Marvels, but I'm sure it's better than this, and it bombed at the box office. And pretty much for the plot, 
plot is pretty much the as the accident caused by Burke, Nathan L. Burke, played by Judd Nelson. We were there, like in the military with Sparky and Shaq. John Henry Rollins there, like in the military. He creates his accidents, which leaves Sparks paralyzed for nearly for life. The accident results in Iron quitting his job. So Burke begins mass producing weapons and selling them to criminals to market, you know, doing illegal stuff. So in order to stop Burke and, you know, from streets and people getting hurt, Irons ends up in Sparks creates a suit of armor. That leads, along with the help of Shaft, or Uncle Joe, and a kid, and his grandmother who doesn't know that he's this hero, he becomes a superhero still, and fight crime, and of course, stop and defeat Burke, and stop him from selling these weapons, and save the city. Cliche. Okay. Yeah. It's a part of nutshell for you. Okay. I'll talk about the movie itself and get my final opinion. A lot on this movie on DVD. I'm never going to own this film on DVD, Blu ray, whatever. It ain't getting in this movie collection. I guarantee you that. Never. Mm mm. Hell no. <laughs> it ain't. But anyway, the film opens up with a music score. The music score, I'll admit, is decent. It's not memorable. It was decent, but nothing memorable, nothing special about it. And like I said, this film has a good soundtrack, but yeah, it doesn't save the movie. Oh, well, this is also an origin story, but the problem is the movie opens up with, you know, the military, I guess, being in the 100 Acre Wood or whatever. And John Henry Ryan's a shack, he's a weapons designer. <laughs> it's high tech laser guns. I'm sorry, I just laugh at this, you know. For the United States. Yeah, and he's like, hey Sparky, and this is bad, I think, you know, Shaq has his, his teeth out, you know, his teeth out, hey, how you doing? And most of the time he looks like he's not acting like he's, you know, off balance, and any chance time he tries, any time he tries to show emotion, it looks laughable, you know, it sounds like he's trying to be in a commercial when he's acting in this movie, and Nathaniel Burke, uh, Judd Nelson, sets off the weapon, and because they let him do it, take care of it, he sets off the weapon, goes off, and Sparky gets hurt. And you know, sure, you know, John Henry Rollins picks up the, the brick that she's in, the the wall is on. He tries to pick it up. Shadow looks like he's gonna take a massive dump or something. But he picks it up. The scene, you know, after we see him taking a massive dump, trying to save Sparky. He, next thing you know, he goes and go in court. He says what happens. Says that he saves Sparky, and his care, you know, Jen Nelson gets thrown out of the military or dismissed or discharged or whatever you want to call it. And he talks to Charles Neighbor, who's his, you know, sergeant, whatever. Sorry, his sergeant. He tells him that we need to work on these weapons. Well, sir, these weapons are dangerous. I'm only involved in this. I quit. I'm done. I'm dismissed. I'm, I'm discharged myself. I'm done, sir. So he goes home. There's a joke about this movie that Shaft's character can't shoot a basket, so every time she shoots a basket, he can't do it, which is stupid. You have Judd Nelson going back to the America, going back to the city. Perfect, of course, mad at him about it, but leaves. He goes to a friend of his, a guy, a friend, a businessman, talks to him about it, about creating weapons, making money, and he goes for it. He even shows, you know, he creates this gun, and there's this lady in the movie, I, I think she was an episode of Flash, she sees what he does, you know, this guy gets hurt, he's like, Bork, you, 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 you stupid SOB, I'm like, how'd you do that, I'm like, that, that guy got an accident, got hurt, it's like, so, you know, accidents happen, and she's like, accidents can, accidents can happen to you too, Bork, and Bork gets prevented from her for saying that, gets her, even on her, because she doesn't support him, so basically he puts her in the elevator, bombs it and kills her. Tells the guy, he's like, you with me? Okay. But the guy he's working with, whatever, who owns arcades or whatever, that he wants to make with, he's okay with it.
you know, he's he's sparking house fire. Anytime he has emotion, it's laughable to like Shaq. I'm sorry, he just cannot act. <laughs> he cannot. He's the wrong person to lead your movie. And he just goes back home, goes to his grandma. She wants to make this promise. She's like, so. You can't understand what I'm saying. So they're speaking slowly. He gets a job working in the iron steel mill, whatever. These ladies are checking him out, but still not paying attention to them. Later on, Iron and his father, or whatever that kid's name is, I forget. They're riding this cop call with this with this officer, this lady who's a police officer, and all of a sudden, uh, Joe Nelson has this gang working for him, and they go to rob a bank, a rob a place. They get a call, and she's like, "Oh, wait!" And the kid's like, "You have to get ready to run I'm like, "Wait a minute! Why would a cop be so stupid? Why would a police officer have civilians in their core take him to danger when bad guys who have guns to their weapons?" Somebody get her, I'm like, uh, wouldn't you just drop them off? But no, because we had to have Shaq be a hero moment. So the officer lady doesn't get out of her car. The, you know, Shaq runs out of the car. Slowly. Then the kid runs out. I'm like, and she's just on her phone. You know, need backup, need backup. Her fellow officers are shooting at these bad guys. I'm like, why are you on the fucking radio. Shouldn't you be on point of gun helping your fellow officers? You are the backup, you dumb bitch. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, she goes close to the weapon, she pitily like you saw her the sonic comes out of it, and then he kills her. And then they one of the the these criminals are so stupid they leave one of the guys behind and he's still in there, he sees Shaq around and Shaq is mad because his friend cop lady gets hurt and he's like this. Who's on him now? And oh my gosh, Shaq runs slow. He talks very slow. He's the slowest mother ever I've ever seen in my life because he runs very slow. They run through this train track. And, you know, we got the kid who, who looks like an 18 year old kid who punches a grown man out. I don't know how that's possible. But he almost gets hit by a train. Shaq saves him in time somehow. Even though he's going to go. Across the field, I mean the fence that has the wires on it. Apparently, he just teleports to the wires, grabs the guy. I don't know how he did it. And he's just running slowly. It's just running slowly. The train's coming, and the guy, the kid, shoots the weapon at him. And I don't know how Shaq does this, but he shoots the train, and Shaq is able to get you know the, the train where the side is open. He rolls very slowly, rolls. He saves the guy. Like yeah, brings the guy away. But Shaq, who you figured is trapped in the train, magically just shows up, teleports, I guess, himself to, I guess, gave Nightcrawler a girl from X-Men to help him out. I don't know. But he shows up and says, hey, what'd you do with weapons? What'd you do with weapons? And one of the guys, I guess, somewhat like these bad guys are so dumb decide to come back, you know, and save this kid. I'm like, okay, normally bad guys don't do this. With crooks, it's every man for yourself. They wouldn't come back for you. They'd probably just leave you. But the guy does come back. We don't know he's mad about his cop from being it. And he calls Charles Napier about it. And he tells him, you know, well, you hope sir. You stupid butt's not going to do nothing about it. You know. And he goes questions to these guys. So I questions. Got one of the, by the way, who, uh, these criminals are dumb because they're even saying, in front of a bar, in front of people, they're going, Yeah, we're the ones that did that. Yeah, we robbed that place. Yeah. And Shaq trying to answer them, and Shaq could probably just take a moment, but instead, they, you know, Shaq grabs one of them, where they point a gun at him, and he goes away angrily. Okay, just bear with me. He goes visit Sparky, finds that she's in the hospital, and breaks the window, so he. You need to lose like he just picks her up, takes her to the hospital, and everyone's yay. No one's thinking yeah. the hell's wrong with him. 
But it helps Sparky, takes him to the junker with Uncle Joe. And he comes up with an idea that we need to stop these weapons, so they build his armor. You know, builds himself an armored suit. Because these weapons are dangerous, they're going to kill people, hurt people, so I just, lady got the cop, a lady got hurt, he decides to become a, a superhero. I guess being inspired to come out by Superman. Well, there's no purpose to that. Oh, by the way, Jed Nelson, you know, talks to these kids. There's an arcade where the, his little brother goes to that's talking, hanging out with Judd Nelson. And in that arcade, you see, you see a Batman Forever arcade game, which is cool. It's like this movie wants to reference Batman. But he goes to Uncle Joe, and Sparky's going to create these weapons. And we go through the montage of the weapons, he's like, got the mask. And the first time you see him in the suit, it's just lame. The mask is lame too, like, this watch the brain of the Superman book, and the Superman the anime series. Are you going to watch Superman Lois? The mask is cool. It kind of looks like Halo in Superman the anime series, I mean Superman in Lois, but it looks a lot cooler than this. This mask sucks. This suit sucks. What does he do? Oh, he stops the purse snatcher. Forget about the weapons and stuff. He stops the purse snatcher, just hangs him on the on a pole or whatever. And he says, you know, I'll see you all later. Have a good one. And he runs and he walks very slow. <laughs> and these bad guys come to him with a machine gun and start shooting him. And they shoot him in the nuts and they almost with it. And, and he's like bulletproof. He's like. And he has this magnet. Wow, really cool. A magnet that can just stop them. And ma the magnet just. You know, gets on him. And I forget the bad guys get away or he stops them. I don't remember. I fell asleep in this part. The next thing I remember, he's on the on a rope. And the rope falls and breaks. He's a lazy superhero and he moves so slow. And the action is not exciting. The action is pretty lame. And half the time he gets knocked on his ass a lot. You know. You know. And it's about how's it going. And they fight crime another night. Well, people are talking about him because he's he's also in a motorcycle, being chased by cops. This chase takes forever. When he's in the suit, it's just boring. And again, the suit is lame. The mask is lame. He gets away though because Sparky is able to get him away in there, get the help from the cops. Uh, but you know, among the cops, the one this cop was actually in Space Jam. He played a uh, Jones' dad in Space Jam. But anyway, he's like, how to get away? This one cop says. He went. He must have went to the back cave. Got to him. Yeah. Lame joke. And also, though, when he gets his hammer, uh, Richard Roundtree, Uncle Joe says, "I especially like the shaft." Uh, shaft joke. Pun there. Because he plays shaft. You know. You get it. Yeah. yeah. But. Or was it after he got chased by the cops? Sorry, this is how forgettable this film is <laughs> to me. Yeah. Sorry if I'm forgetting anything, but this movie is just not, it's not a very memorable film. And Jed Nelson talks to one of the crooks. And tells him, who's this steel guy? Who's this guy in armor suit? Who is he? Why is he messing my business? And he says, we well, keep him out of the way. And he continues with his plans to route people. I mean, to keep doing what he's doing. You know, he tries again. And there's another night where still comes out. And his, his, which he barely uses his hammer. And his hammer, you know, is like a gun on it. And I mean, some of the CGI, when some of the sonic booms come out of it for the weapon, Okay, so we get good, decent CGI there. But the only thing is, Shaq just shoots at him very slowly. He walks very slowly to shoot at him. He's not getting hurt to one of the bad guys. <laughs> shoots him. Well, he's a superhero. He gets knocked on his ass. Like a wimp. Or is falling on his ass at the time. You know, and the bad guys get away. All I remember is him just, you know, there's never any action scenes or him fighting with bad guys. <laughs>
but you know, and he's just a lame superhero. But after that, you know, his identity gets found out somewhat. Because again, you look at Shaq's mask. Because you know he's one of the criminals. They shoot at the helicopter because I suppose the cop that was going to chase him that night. He runs and saves the guy with his face. And you can just tell this is such a lame mask. You can just tell who's behind the mask. It's Shaq. You can just look at the guy and tell who it is. I mean, a lame way of keeping your superhero identity, isn't it? <laughs> you know, apparently your mask isn't work good enough. But you know, he goes away and gets away from the cops. Drives back into the Uncle Joe's car. You know, and then Uncle, Uncle Joe's able to hide him. He goes to his grandma's and again she's like, "Shh, shh, shh. She's like, the sofa, the sofa, the And they're whispering once again, like, "How's it doing?" And I can't understand what you're saying. What? What are you saying? I can't understand you. All they're doing is whispering. Can you imagine somebody talking to you and just, you know? That's that's the dialogue in this film with the souffle. I'm like, how's it going to hurt the damn souffle, the, the food cooking, when you're talking very loud? I can't understand what in the world they're saying. Because <laughs> like, when someone talks like that, I can't understand what in the world you're saying when you're whispering. You know, I'm not deaf. You know, I have glasses, I can't see, but I'm not deaf. You know, the Ken Johnson like this group think, let's just you know have them talk like this with the souffle, just to be a joke and be funny. It's not funny. Because do you not really hear Johnson? People are not deaf. Anyway, the cop show up. Sh Shag just fights half of them, but, you know, the cop wants to get him to say that he's the man still, identified still. And these people that he bought their roll-up back to, their money back to, they know who he is, and they refuse to the cops. And the cop that saw him is looking at him, he looks at still, he looks at, he looks at Aaron, knows that he's still, doesn't say anything. And he's like, He does a, sh a shitty job of keeping his identity safe. It's not like you have a grandmother and a little brother that can get hurt because of it. But anyway, he calls Sparky. He's got this in his mouth. He has the bigger piece in his mouth, and he's talking to her. And Shaq acts like nobody can hear him. There's a cop and this officer. Uh, there's this criminal and cop, and there's other people he's talking to, and they can hear him. Like nobody else can hear him talk. He's talking pretty loud. Like, are those cops so that cop's so stupid that he can't tell? Like, who are you talking to? Can't look at his ear and see that he's talking to the earpiece. All he do is look in his ear and see the earpiece. <laughs> but anyway, Sparky comes up with an idea. She pretends to. She gets the district attorney's name or somewhat with her technology. She's able to copy his voice as the notification. She uses his voice on the phone to get him released out of prison. Somewhat thinks to help Uncle Joe too. But meanwhile, Burke, John Nelson, sets on TV to these criminals, to the high-ranking criminals, criminal crime bosses, to make money off, of, off the market, off these weapons. Pairs to auction all these off, to have a criminal organization in the world, to, just to make a lot, a lot of money. Sparky, you know, he's just talking to him on the phone, and he's going to go do another superhero fight. That must have been four when he gets her to stop him, and he gives his ass kick. Sparky gets kidnapped. He attempts to infiltrate Burke's headquarters. Oh, he's captured stupidly, by the way. Yeah, he's sneaking around a little bit. Okay. He's looking, he's hearing Burke talk. Burke, uh, he's hearing Bart. Uh, he's hearing Jenison and talk to the colonels, or colonels, to the crime bosses, to the crime organization, tell them that, you know, talk to him about how he's going to sell the weapons. And one of the colonels is behind him, shoots him with a sonic gun, gets a knock on his ass, he's just looking at Jen is like, Well, Mr. Steele, how are you? And he tells him about the weapon, he's like, Are these weapons you can show to me? And then the video game correct arcade guy that owns the arcade says, We are under it and Jen Nelson shoots it, kills him, and it's like, By me. <laughs> Say by me. And he gets he doesn't do anything. He could get up and just not Jen Nelson out like that, but he just says to Gets up, you know, convinces him to touch the red button 
on the steel, I mean on the, the hammer, and it goes to him. And then Sparky comes up with it. I'm like, oh, Sparky? Yeah, okay, that's a cool moment. She's shooting stuff out of the weapons. He turns a wheelchair into a weapon, which is cool. She's more of a badass than, than Shaq is. But anyway, she zooms out of there, you know, to rock her way out of there thanks to her wheelchair. And still fights with the man, still gets stupidly, you know. The kid gets captured by Judd Nelson. He's got a gun on the kid. He's able to get away because he gets shot at or whatever. I think about Uncle Joe. He tries to shoot a weapon at him and it reflects back to him and it kills Judd Nelson. And after, you know, after that, you know, one of the main, the main folks try to put him in there with a grenade. And again, a grenade would take how long to go? 10 minutes? Well, they were like 15 minutes, 15 seconds of talking. And he shoots the grenade out and was the man henchman? And the henchman sees what? The henchman, he's like, Ha! Yeah. But they escape apart the building, and that's that. And still is conforming as a hero, I guess, to the town. And he tells his nephew, or cousin, brother, whatever, don't tell grandma about this. So, apparently, still becomes a hero. And the following day, Colonel David tries to talk to, talks to actor, the officer singer. It's a voice changer. It might be really all his voice, I don't know. Or they're just using the lights of it. About the events, and he's like, it's someone he just knows the irons. He knows it's John Henry Irons. He's not one apparently. He knows it's something like, your stupid voice disguise doesn't work. And who the grandmother has a grand opening of a restaurant. And Joe tells everyone that he'd be proud of his hero or something. They talk about anybody's proud to have still part of their family. And apparently, she's able to get, as far as he's able to make, you know, that wheelchair stand up. It allows her to work, which Iron Smiles and Hugs her, and the movie ends there. And that's still, yeah. So let me get my final pen on this movie. Ooh, okay. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Yeah, you can consider this simple, right? Because I hated this movie. I hated, hated, I hated still. This is one of the. Uh, still, for Shaq, still now. This is one of the, super, the worst superhero movies ever made. I've been one of the worst. I mean, this film was just. Yeah, this film is just completely awful. The steel with Shaquille O'Neal sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. The suit's even lame. You think it looks cool here on the poster. But when you look at the mask, and the, it's completely different. And the suit looks lame. Here's why I don't like it. Number one is the story. The story's not interesting. You know, it has nothing to do with Superman. You know, John Henry Irons, he's, su he's supposed to be, you know, the reason he is the superhero he is is because of Superman. But Superman has nothing to do with this movie except for the tattoo he has on his arm. I see it like they're trying to make the mask out of Batman for some reason. Like that so they even have a Batman Forever arcade game that makes a cameo like two times in the movie. They see two times in the movie. So it's like they're trying and they make the Batman joke in the mic. I mean he came after the death of Superman. I mean, if you don't have Superman Involved here in any way, then what's the point of having making a steel movie? Were they just doing it for the quick cash grab? Probably so. Probably because they thought, you know, Space Jam made a lot of money. That was a huge success, so let's make steel with the Shaquille O'Neal. Maybe that'll be a huge hit. So it has nothing to do with Superman. It's not like the comics book. His suit is stupid and lame. The story sucks that about these weapons. It could be, okay, that could be interesting, but the thing is, the film is boring. You know, Jed Nelson tries, but he's often a lame villain. The woman that plays Spark, she tries, but I just didn't care about her enough. She she tries, she's the one that tries. Uncle Joe, Shaft, honestly, Richard Roundtree, it seems like he's just doing it for a patient. Like, nobody cares. They just make bad dialogue and bad jokes. 
Like nobody gives a crap here. The kid is annoying, the grandma, and she's like, I'm talking like this, that was annoying. It's just, and the humor sucks, <laughs> the action sucks. Like I said, the suit is lame. He gets knocked on his ass, or falls on his ass all the time. Yeah, he's a lame superhero. Yeah, he is. The suit's a magnet, yay, and he can shoot out of guns out, yay. But half the time he can't shoot worth the shit because he's a terrible shot. Yeah, and him being a weapon designer and armor, it's just five bullshit. Yeah. She's killing him, his acting is bad. Everybody else is trying, but their acting is not good because of the, the bad script by Kenneth Johnson, who also can't direct a movie. The film, the cinematography on it does look nice. The editing is alright. The music score is decent, so it's not very really nice. But it's not good enough. It's still a stupid movie. Still one of the worst superhero movies. Yeah. And it's just, it's boring. It's lame. It's forgettable. It's not exciting. It is not pumped up. It's not... It's not a badass movie. It's it's stupid. It's a lame movie. It's stupid. It should have had something to do with Superman being involved. I mean, you could have had a Superman movie, or you could have had a Steel movie many years later. You didn't need it right now. This film really did feel like rushed in production. It feels like they just, for the sake of making it, because they just wanted to make a comic book movie, just to get, you know, just to make money. It seems like Quincy Jones and David Stone, they were just doing this because they were fans of the character and just thought, oh, this will be great. But guess what? I bet you when Blade came out the next year and then how successful that was, I bet you they were thinking, we screwed up. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> we should kill him now. And Shaq, his acting is terrible. It's the lead. He cannot lead a movie to save his life. They just should play Sparky and they, you know, Judd Nelson. They, they try, but... And the bad guys are stupid. A lot of stupid dialogues. Yeah, the dialogue is cheesy, and the plot is dumb. Yeah, get it, get it weapons off the street, but it's it's done, it's just done so poorly. Yeah, some of the CGI shots don't even hold up. CGI shots are not well hold up, and the action is not exciting. The suit's lame, so still it's just a stupid, lame, boring movie. It's not even cheesy at all, you know. It's rotten cheese, is what it is. It's a rotten piece of shit movie. <laughs> it's terrible. It's boring. I fell asleep to this movie. It's just not exciting. It's it's one of the worst superhero movies ever made, in my opinion. One of the worst movies ever made, in my opinion. Like I said, Jen Nelson tries. You know, Annabeth, Annabeth Gish, I can't say her name right. She tries. Yeah. The only two actors, you know, Charles Napier, or Charles Napier is just here for a paycheck. So the same thing with. Actually, but I'm sure you see what they didn't care. <laughs> They're just probably doing it for the paycheck. Hmm. Like, nobody was giving, in this movie, you just tell they just didn't give a crap, you know. So, yeah, I can't, I don't know what this is, but still, but this one is horrible. It's boring, lame. If you, if you have seen, yeah, I definitely, I would not recommend seeing this movie. Don't waste your time. But if you see it, watch it on TV, and you see how bad it is, you know what I'm talking about. But still, what's you you? Not ready for this film. You know what? Screw it. Despite those things I liked, it's still going to be 0 out of 5 stars. My rating for still Shaquille O'Neal is 0 out of 5 stars. And a thumbs down. At least Michael J. White tried in Spawn, despite how crap that was. At least he tried. But still, his acting is terrible. That's one of the main reasons. And this film sucks. If you want to see the character down better, watch Superman Lois. Watch Superman the Anime Series. Or just as a limited episode, or Brain of the Superman. Yeah, still as much more awesome in those than he is in his own movie, sadly. Hopefully, one day he gets his own movie. Maybe we'll get a reboot, or another film, whatever, that does the character some justice, and that has something to do with Superman. They can do that now. I'm hoping James Gunn would be really cool if he would have a Superman movie. Maybe Superman Legacy, maybe Superman will face Doomsday properly done and not rush, and we can have the character John Henry Irons, and he becomes still, and he gets his own movie. That would make a lot more sense, you know. You know, we got to give this character a be you know. Superman is a big influence, and he's a weapon designer, but he, he's not an engineer. He can't build all his, that people will help him. I see John Henry is a smart guy, you know, who can build his own weapons, who can make his own suit, do his own gadgets, and he should be smart. This dude's a friggin' idiot, you know. And 
a weak a superhero, my superhero gets his ass handed to him. Hmm. But still, 0 out of 5 range for Steel once again, it's 0 out of 5 stars. I hate this movie. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Thumbs down for Steel. If I had the DVD, I'd smack the hell out of it right now. <laughs> but anyway, that's Steel, we should kill on him. So please tell me in the comments down below, guys, if you've seen Steel, we should kill on him. Let me know what you think about this crappy movie down below. And if you like it, to each his own, but why? I don't understand why anybody would like this. Please explain to me, please, please do. And if you like the movie, good for you. But I and this movie should be next. Now we're getting into the year 1998 of superhero movies. It's only three movies. This movie came out in May, and it stars I've never seen before, but it's a Marvel character, and he's played by not Samuel Jackson. This is way before the MC, way before. It's said by David Hansen, but that is Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I've never seen this film before in my life. <laughs> I've just heard about it. So, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. is next. And guys, let me know what you think about S.H.I.E.L.D. down in the comments down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next review for Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. starring David Hasselhoff. Oh, then I got two more, which will be The Mask of Zorro. And Blade. Mask of Zorro starring Antonio Banderas and Blade starring Wesley Snipes. Those will be tomorrow. And then finish up with two 1999 movies. 1998, I did review Batman Mr. Free Sub Zero. Check that out on my channel if you want to, but I did review that movie. So definitely check that out. But I'll put it on my playlist as well on my channel for superhero reviews marathon. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. See you later. Bye bye. Bye. I love this movie. <laughs> I made mad. Bye-bye.